The Raspberry Pi revolution has kind of fizzled out because, well, let's face it, Raspberry Pis really aren't available anymore. Or are they? Well, so this is a little trek that I've been taking, and it turns out that while Raspberry Pis themselves are not available as much as we would like, there's actually some pretty nice replacements for them that are really readily available at basically the same price points. Um, so what I was looking for was something like the Raspberry Pi 02W. This is a wireless uh, Raspberry Pi and a very small form factor. And so um, it basically has uh, half a gig of RAM on it. It's got a Wi-Fi chip. And it's basically a... Uh, um, all you know, all purpose single board computer, and it runs off of a micro SD card. And so it's a really tiny form factor, it uses very little power. Um, but the problem is, is that you really can't get them. So you notice the Raspberry Pi Foundation advertises this as a $15 computer. Well, because of the shortage in actuality, it will actually cost you a hundred dollars to get one of these things. Okay, and then you're not even guaranteed quantity. So, for example, if you wanted to make this as a foundation of a device, well, I wouldn't really try it. So, instead, um, it turns out that there's actually some readily made alternatives to the Raspberry Pi 2.0 that are just out there waiting for you. And the one that I'm going to look at, which I think is probably the most price competitive and direct competitor, is the Banana Pi M20. All right, so as you can see, this guy is actually basically the same uh, form factor as the uh, Raspberry Pi 02W. It's got the same 40 pin Raspberry Pi header that we've all come to know and love. And it basically has the same specs. It's got a half a gig of RAM. It's got a quad core processor. This thing is amazing. And so here's the webpage from bananapi.org. Uh, describing it and you can see it's got your uh, basic it's got a micro SD slot a mini HDMI connector uh, DC power through USB and a general USB slot and so this thing is actually really powerful really helpful and it's readily available um, so now they advertised the uh, the Raspberry Pi 02W as being a $15 computer well it's not $15 if you can't get it at all but you can find this guy on um, on AliExpress for $23. And this has free shipping. And uh, now I actually haven't tried the one uh, directly from AliExpress. Uh, there's other there's other vendors as well that you can get it for. If, if you go to AliExpress, the actual model is BPI-M20. And I would search for a price max of $24, and that'll give you several options to choose from. Um, now, as I said, I haven't actually ordered from AliExpress. I usually get mine from Amazon because it's got next day shipping. And so this guy's a little pricier. It's $40, um, but it comes with this handy uh, USB connector. It comes with a, uh, a Wi-Fi antenna, which you actually need on this. Um, and it gets to you the very next day. So um, the nice thing about this is that, you know, if you say, well, I really want, I prefer a Raspberry Pi itself. Well, the nice thing about this is that even though it isn't a Raspberry Pi branded one, if you ever need this, as I said, for a large scale product, with the, which you're going to actually ship in a product, you can find these. So if I go back to my Ali page, uh, they usually have um, how many they have available. Um, yeah, so this, this, this one seller has 1,252 pieces available. And so you can get just as many of these as you wish. Um, now one thing that, um, now you can hook this up to a standard monitor, um, standard keyboard, but one thing that I actually really recommend because you usually use these things in places where you don't necessarily have a computer already, I recommend buying one of these things. Or maybe not, even if you're not buying this one in particular, something like it. What this is is a portable monitor and keyboard. And so what this does is the monitor itself is, um, it's got a battery pack in it. So I don't have to find a place to plug in a monitor. The monitor and keyboard comes together kind of like a, kind of like a laptop shell. And I find that be, to be really helpful. And um, 
so anyway, um, all that uh, together uh, gets me uh, the the actual banana pie, and so then we need to put software on it. So um, the the software instead of a straight Raspberry Pi OS, uh, it uses Armbian. And so you can go to the Armbian website. The problem is, and I don't know why, you actually can't find the right download straight from the Armbian website. You actually have to Google for it. It's on the Armbian website, but you have to Google for it. So if you Google Armbian BPI M20, um, you will find the first link that comes up is the Banana Pi M20. Uh, one thing that I'll warn you about is the one thing that makes uh, the banana pies a little bit harder is that you have to have the exact right build for your device. So, for example, there's a banana pie M2 Plus, and software for the banana pie M2 Plus won't boot on the M20. But anyway, you can come to Armbian, and you can come and you can... Uh, just say, okay, well, I, I want, do I want the command line interface or do I want the minimal? I usually just go for the command line interface because you notice there's actually not that much difference. And then you can download it and uh, flash it onto um, a flash card and get started. Um, so uh, in a minute, we'll uh, I'll boot this up and show you what that looks like. But a few things to note is that um, the banana pie will, if it does not detect a display when it boots up, it will not turn on the display driver. So the two things that I've had, uh, trouble, uh, with the banana pie and trouble with these things are difficult because if something doesn't work, you can't really see what's happening. So the two things that I've had issues with are one of all, one of which was the, uh, the power supply wasn't giving enough juice. Um, and so that's happened even in power supplies, which I thought were big enough. Um, actually what's worked really well for me is, uh, just a straight little Apple power brick. These things actually work like champs. Um, and the other thing is having your monitor actually on before you plug it in. So one of the, especially with this guy, these things will go into sleep mode after about five to 10 seconds. So what you have to do is you have to turn it on and immediately plug in your board for them to work. So the next step in the process after you download um, Armbian is to uh, flash it onto your flash drive. And I always use Belina Etcher for that. And you can find that at belina.io. And so they've got a version of, of Etcher for just about every platform. Um, I'm on a Mac. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to... So there's my download. I'm going to go to Applications and... Open up Belina Etcher. I'm going to open it. Once it's open, it looks like this. And all you have to do is choose the file. Choose Flash from File. And we'll choose that Armbian build I just downloaded. Hit Open. Then I'm going to select my target. And it's going to show me... Um, let's see here. It did not find my media i don't think so that's my main disc i don't know what that is so i'll try um try plugging it in again and see if it finds it there we go so it got installed at slash dev slash disk six now you can use just straight command line tools for this uh, but um, I prefer Belina Etcher just because it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then you hit Flash. It'll ask me for my password. And then it will flash onto my drive. And once that process is done, all I'll have to do is to... Uh, Stick it into my um, my banana pie and get started. And while we're downloading, one thing I did want to note is that I did have to solder the headers onto this myself. Um, so if you're not into soldering and you want to use GPIO, um, then um, you you do need to add the solder the the headers 
or find some other way to solder attachments onto the GPIO. But soldering headers isn't hard. Um, it just took it took me about five minutes. Um, and also, I mean, soldering headers is also pretty error-proof. I am terrible at soldering. Um, and so these are pretty, pretty resistant to um, bumbling around. You just have to, um, you know, take a little bit of care, but just um, these are, these are hand soldered by me. So we're almost done flashing. And after it flashes, it'll validate it. And we can skip that if we want to, but I'll let it uh, flash to the end. And then we'll get um, moving on getting this uh, booted up and set. And I'll hit ignore because it's basically saying it's um, it's flashed with a Linux drive. Um, and so Macs don't read Linux drives. So it says, eh, I don't know what this is. So I'm just going to hit ignore because I don't care. And now I can eject it from my, um, um, I've, I'm using, I'll show you. I'm using this little guy to, uh, as an SD card reader. So it's got, it's got some USBs on, on, on the front and it's got some SD card stuff on the back. And this is the micro SD card that I'm using. This is a 32 gig. Uh, you can use anything. I wouldn't recommend anything lower than four gigabytes, uh, but you can you can actually get some decent apps in four gigabytes. So, um, so all I have to do is uh, plug this in. Um, actually, I've got another one in there that's got another app I've been working on. So I'll unplug that, drop it on the floor, and then all I have to do is uh, put it in the slot and. It's ready to go. All right, one other thing that I forgot to mention was that um, the Banana Pie does not work very well um, without an antenna. So I got, uh, this actually comes with the, uh, the Amazon package. It is a little, um, I put electrical tape on there just to prevent it from touching anything. It's a little, uh, uh, a little antenna. This is called a UFL connector. And there is a connector right there on the board and you basically just have to um, push that in and um, just push it kind of until it clicks and once it clicks you're in and uh, you can move that around wherever is reasonable but it's got a little pigtail now so let's see if you can see that connected to the board so it's, anyway, so that gives it good Wi-Fi. So then I've got, um, this is the uh, DVI connection, and this is a mini DVI connector. Um, and then I've got my two USBs. Um, this one goes into my, uh, in, into my screen, and this one goes into power. All right, so now we'll try to get this thing booted. So I'm going to bring my screen over here so we can watch Make sure it's all in camera so the um, main thing is as I said before we've got to turn the screen all the way on right before we plug it in so when this comes on and says no signal I'll give it a plug in there it goes plug in the chip And there it is booting up. Just a regular Linux boot up. And then you'll set the password uh, when you get to the end. So um, the, when you first log in, um, it's a root login. And the password is simply 1234. And it'll ask you to change your password, set up a user, and set up your time zone. And that's pretty much it. You've got a running Linux box um, just right on, uh, just right ready to go. In short, there's no longer really any need for Raspberry Pis specifically. Um, now that we have Banana Pi and other com competitors, all you have to do is find something with a matching price point and a matching 40-pin header, and this Banana Pi 
uh, M20 is amazing, and I really highly recommend it and recommend it for your projects. Have fun.